Welcome to the weekly podcast of Grace Valley Church. We're thrilled to have you join us. Our goal is to guide individuals towards Jesus and help them fulfill their divine destiny. Our hope is that you'll experience a renewed encounter with God today. For additional information about our church, please visit mygracevalley.com. Without further ado, let's dive into this week's message. It's fun. Today, let's dive into the Word. If you have your Bibles, please take them and turn with me to the book of Acts. Uh, we are going to take a look at the last few verses of Acts 24, and then we're going to step into the book uh, uh, of chapter 25. Uh, we have been really just on an incredible journey of that. We are stepping into an incredible journey that we would love for you to be a part of as well in this moment. And, and, and maybe you're new to our body. Check this out. We have been in the book of Acts for almost two years. And we are bringing it to a close uh, here in the next few weeks. And we just want you to know that as we step into these last few weeks in the book of Acts, that God has something very special in store for you and your heart and your life. How many of you are hungry for the word today? Come on. So we're going to take a look at this uh, chapter. We're going to take a look at this verse and what God has for us. Today, the title of my message is Focus on Faithfulness. Focus on Faithfulness. How many of you know faithfulness is uh, a, a powerful thing in our lives when we encounter it, when, when we experience faithfulness, when we live faithfully. Uh, God's blessing is on that. We're going to see what God does here in the life of Paul. And as we understand faithfulness, God also has a calling on our lives. And it starts uh, even before we dive into the book of Acts. Let's take a look at this verse from Matthew chapter 28. Uh, beginning in verse uh, 19 and 20. This is the command that the Lord gives to us. He says, go into all the world. Go to and go therefore and make disciples of all nations. That we would understand God's calling on our lives as believers is to go into all the world. Maybe it's to send through kingdom builders. And what an awesome picture from, from uh, Chris Payne of what's happening at the University of Michigan and uh, all the campuses across our state. This month in Kingdom Builders, we are focusing on the future generation and what God is doing in those areas. And, and that was just one university, the University of Michigan. It is a great university. How many of you know there are many students there that need to find Jesus? You need to follow him. We want to be a part of that all around the world. We believe that God has called us to be a church, to go, therefore, into all the world, to send, to make disciples. We want to do that right here in the Saginaw Valley. We want to do that in every city and, and township all throughout this entire Saginaw Valley area. But we also want to be a part of what God's doing around our state, around our nation, and around the world. He said, therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them. I can't wait till next Sunday and we get to do that very thing. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Uh, teaching them to obey. Everyone say obey. Now, the Lord gives us commands, and he calls us to read his word and to obey his commands and to walk faithfully in him. And we see from Paul's example of what he begins here in this journey that he has been on, we're going to take a quick look back, but we're going to see all the things that God has brought him through to this moment where he is so incredibly faithful in God's call on his life and teaching them to obey everything that I command you and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Church, that's an incredible promise for you and I today that we don't walk this life alone. He is with us to the very end of the age, to the end of our days, 
to the ends of the earth. God is calling us and, and walking with us. And he sends us, but he doesn't send us alone. He wants you to know that what you're walking through today, his hand is on your life. He is leading you. He is guiding you. And you know, I think that's the interesting thing is sometimes when we're walking through difficulties, it's hard to imagine. We say, where are you, God? Maybe like the psalmist David, are, are you going, how long? are you going to forget me? I don't know if you've ever felt like, like God has forgotten you. Like you don't know, like he doesn't know my name. He doesn't know my address because I, I just don't know where he is because I, I have all of this calamity or difficulty that's happening in my life. We kind of talked about it during communion time. I want you to know that even when you're walking through the difficult times of this life, that one day you're, you're going to look back and you go, wow. Look what he did, because it might be that just through this trial that you're walking through, God's wanting to do something powerful in your heart and in your life. And this is the call that he gives us to therefore go and make disciples. Go and do this thing. I, I want you to know in 2022, Lifeway did a, uh, 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 they did a, uh, I don't know what they did. <laughs> The words, words are hard when you hit 50. Um, they, they literally took a poll. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, they took a poll and they began to research what Christians were actively involved in, in this Matthew 28 commission that God has given us. Listen to this. Just, I'm just going to give you two of them. 38% of Christians have shared how to become a believer with family or friend. 34% have invited someone to church. That's an incredible stat for me. When, when the Lord saves us and he calls us his own and he puts a, a burden in our heart, all of a sudden we see that we're now to walk out God's calling in our lives. In our lives. And, and here in Matthew 28, we see the Great Commission. God says, go into all the world. And yet only less than half of those who call themselves a Christian have ever witnessed have ever shared Christ with a family or friend. Only 34% have ever even invited someone to come to church with them. Or that, I don't know about you, but I believe that we have something worth sharing. Not us as a church, us as the people of God. He is the one that's worth sharing. He's the one that people need to know about. He's the one who has everything in his hands. He has our hearts in his hands. He has our lives in his hands. We are not in any way. You know, I've had people ask, who, who, who can come to your church? I'm like, what kind of question? Everybody can come to church. Everybody, come on, everybody say everybody. everybody. You know, everybody means everybody. Everybody can come it, right? to church. Everybody. So as we begin to understand what God is doing in our church and what God is doing in the church, we understand that everyone, he died not just for some, he died for everyone. all, Amen. everybody. He died for everyone. Now, as we begin to experience this thing that we are walking out called life. We understand that there are some things that create uh, difficulties. There are some things that can hinder us. There are some things that can cause us to have a, a, a moment of whoops. Come on, anybody had a whoops moment in your life? Yes. Now, I want to share something with you, and this is that. There needs to be an understanding as a church that we are not here in any way, shape, or form to create or build a brand of Grace Valley Church. Amen. amen. You can amen on that. 
I know you love your church. We love our church. But we are not called to build a brand of a church, even a brand of a gospel. We are called to minister to people and create lifelong followers of Jesus who love the Lord and seek him. We do that through a number of ways. We we have church on Sunday morning. I love being here. I can't wait on Sunday mornings. I wake up and I cannot wait to get to church. I can't wait to see friendly faces and smiles and drink coffee in the cafe. It's a wonderful morning. We have small groups that are growing. We have opportunities to take next steps. We have opportunities for people to serve because we are called to be, everyone say faithful. 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 We today need to focus on our faithfulness. What does that mean? I think that we are better when we are focused, faithful, and simple. Focused, faithful, and simple. Now, um, this is for uh, this is this is this is for old all of us. I'm going to include myself. All of us old people in the room. If you're not one of us, now how do you know you're one of us? If you never had a Walkman that you had to put a cassette in, this is not you. If you never had to call a radio station so that you could hear a song that you wanted to hear, come on. If you never had to put little foam headphones on your head, come on, how many of you ever had some of those? And the Walkman was about this big on your head. And you had to switch out the cassette, right? If that's not you, you just need to... Just be quiet for just a minute and hear what I'm about to say. Have you noticed as we've gotten older, the more simple we want our lives to be? Yes, absolutely. Oh, I'm, I'm seeing yes. people wave at me. Oh, yes. yes, preach. Yeah. The more, like in my 20s, I wanted to conquer the world. In my 50s, I just want more sleep. (laughs) Come on. Just let me get some rest. I'm tired. I'm weary. I need, need some rest. The older I get, the simpler I'm striving to make my life. (laughs) I'm going to skip that one. I really think that the longer we know him, the longer we walk in our relationship with the Lord, the more that this becomes true as well, and it should be true, that we should focus on what's true, what's good, and what matters. And I think that as we focus on him and we simplify, we're going to learn this from Paul. He literally, uh, from time, we know the story. I mean, he would go into a city and there was riots and they would uproar and then he was called on and, and there were false witnesses and accusations and, and, and early in Acts, man, he was giving these long explanations and every time time he was called in, and this just happened over and over again, his message got shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter, and he simplified it to what exactly mattered in that moment. It became concise. It became sharp. It became pointed, and here we see uh, that, that, that he begins this dialogue is we're going to pick up this this passage but I believe that we need to learn from Paul this morning in how to make our yes we want to make our lives more simple but maybe in our spiritual lives we need to hone in and focus on what matters I think Paul tells us here what matters he begins this Begins talking and sharing. He's been called on account. He's been uh, imprisoned. He's been sent to Rome. He's been sent. He is here. He's there. He's locked 
up for a couple of years waiting on Felix, as Pastor Brian shared last Sunday so eloquently, the procrastination waiting. He said, when I'm ready, I'll summon you. And how many times have we said, God, when I'm ready, then I will step into what you have for me. I think faithfulness is a powerful thing. And let me also share with you this. If you think that someday I'll be faithful, but you're unable to be faithful now, you will never be faithful then. You could say, oh, well, I just want to, I just want to get through school. Oh, I just went, when I get that job, I'm going to focus on that for someday when I get there and I achieve and I attain, then I'll be faithful. When I finally get married or have a family, like there's always this someday, let me tell you something, you will never be faithful then if you cannot be faithful today. We have to be focused on the life we want. I want to challenge you, focus on the life you want today and watch it unfold and take place in front of you. I want to be more focused. I want to be more intentional with the time that I spend with my family. Uh, I want to be more focused on the things that I do. I, I want to be more faithful and focused on building my kids, building my marriage, growing in my character with God. I, I want to be generous to God and to others. I, how many of you, that would be your heart's cry today. Lord, help us to be more focused. The older I get, I don't want to conquer the world. I want to conquer me. Can anybody? I don't want to conquer the world. God, help me to conquer me. We pick up this awesome passage of Scripture before we dive into chapter 25. I want to pull out from chapter 24 what uh, we looked at last week, and that'll be a springboard uh, over the next few verses. But let's take a look at Acts 24, beginning in verse 24 through 27. It says, after some days, Felix came with his wife, Drusilla, who was Jewish. I think it's very important that he calls that out. And he mentions that she was Jewish. Uh, Felix was not Jewish, but his wife, Drusilla, was Jewish. And therefore, she was intrigued with what, what this man, Paul, was teaching and preaching, which I'm sure helped her husband be very intrigued in what was taking place as well. And he sent for Paul and he heard him speak about faith in Christ. Jesus. And as he reasoned about righteousness and self-control and the coming judgment, Felix was alarmed and said, go away for the present. When I get an opportunity, I will summon you. At the same time, he hoped that money would be given him by Paul. He was waiting for a bribe, so he sent for him often and conversed with him. When two years had elapsed, Felix was succeeded by Portius Festus, and desiring to do the Jews a favor, Felix left Paul in prison. Last week, Pastor Brian really un Un unfolded the, the life of Felix and what he did. Today, I want to kick off by taking these verses, and I want you to see the message that Paul brought to Felix, and it's in three things. You'll see it right there in the scripture. You'll see it, and, and you'll see it on the screen. They're underlined there. Three things that he brought. He reasoned about righteousness and self-control and the coming judgment, and Felix was alarmed. I want you to know that as we strive in this life, Paul brought it all down to this very narrow three things. He kept it simple. And I want to challenge you today in, in this life that we live, there is a pull on our lives, a pull on our time, a pull on our schedule, a pull on all of those things that we have. And I want to charge you today, keep it simple. Keep it simple. Focus on the main things, your time, your family. How many of you know time goes quickly? I can't believe how fast time is moving, probably because I'm sleeping so much now that I hit 50. I'm just kidding. I really don't sleep that much. I joke in a way that tells 
us and I understand that, that as we keep it simple, it's really about focusing on the things that matter. This life is fleeting. The things of this world are fleeting, and we need to focus on what God has put us here to do. Paul, understanding and knowing the calling that was on his life, is now standing in this incredible moment, and he tells them, and he begins to talk, and he begins to share about righteousness, self-control, and the coming judgment. He kept the main thing the main thing. He did not stand there and address the, the national political things that were happening in that moment. He didn't uh, uh, create a political army. He didn't even try to solve the age-old debate at the time between the Calvinists and the Arminians. He, He didn't do that. He stood up and said, it's not about all those things. Here's the simple message of Jesus Christ. You need to live righteous. You need to have self control and you need to be aware that there will be a day when we stand before this Jesus whom you crucified and give an account and the judgment will come it's coming and we go wow what 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 does that mean how do we how do we understand to live these things that paul begins to unfold here the first thing is the righteousness of christ i want you to know that there is no one no one is right on their own No one passes the right test, no matter how good your life or your church attendance or uh, your service record uh, might appear. It doesn't matter how good your life looks on paper. Not a single person in this room or around the world or who has ever lived will ever enter in or know righteousness except by the blood of Jesus Christ. We can't do enough good things. We can't accomplish and and somehow make it happen. I I want you to know that the the best people on the planet, not not, and, and even those who do incredible things, unless they know Jesus, unless the blood of Jesus is applied to their lives, that understand this, that God has a plan and a purpose, and he leads us, and he's guiding us, and he's steering us, and he's calling us to live righteously. Jesus said it himself, no one comes to the Father but through me. Without the blood of Christ applied to our lives, I want you to know that faithful in knowing Jesus, we are in many ways, we understand Jesus is our Savior, but many of us don't really like, I kind of mentioned it briefly because my mind was on my message. You ever do that? You have your mind on something? My mind was on my message, and I kind of shared it during uh, uh, communion, that many of us want Jesus as Savior, but we really don't want him to be our Lord. We want control of our own lives. We want to have control of, of, of the situations in our lives. How many of you are control freaks like me? Right? We don't, we don't want to go anywhere unless we know the plan or we're creating the plan. We want to be in control of of every situation of our lives. We want to be in control many times of our kids' lives and other people's situations and lives. And, And there's this thing that we understand and the Lord says he's calling us and he's not just our savior. Thank the Lord he's our savior. I mean, that's that's the incredible good news of the gospel that, that Jesus Christ is our savior. But today he's calling us, whether you don't know him or whether you've known him all of your life, to again today say, God, I trust you. Lord, I wanna know you. I want to walk with you. God, I want to trust you with every area of my life. Righteousness of Christ. Paul then begins to talk a little bit about self-control as a follower of Jesus, that that we need to have self-control in our lives and self-control over the things that that God is doing in our lives and those things that we would have self-control. I want you to know it's the Holy Spirit that is inside of us. It's the Holy Spirit that changes us from the inside out. When we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Savior, there's the Holy Spirit who is inside of us and He's 
doing something incredible that we understand that we don't now have to live in the old way. We don't have to live somehow the way we were raised. We don't have to say, well, I wasn't raised that way. Well, guess what? You have a new daddy. You got a new father and his name is God the Father. You, you may say, well, I was born this way. I want to encourage you to be born again. Be born again. Ask God to touch your heart and your life and to say, you know what? Here I am, God. I'm going to trust you. The spirit inside of you. He is inside of you. Because of that, we don't have to live by our own impulses. We don't have to live by our own sin. We don't have to live by the baggage that we're carrying. I want you to hear this. This isn't on the screen, but listen to this. We can live Holy Spirit lives, not to somehow impress God, but because God is pressed into us. We don't live to somehow do enough good and right to impress God. We live and do right because God has impressed himself upon us, upon our hearts. I don't have to live that way. Paul is talking to the leaders and he's telling them that you need righteousness in Christ and you must have self-control, that you don't have to live or have that lying spirit or, 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 or the lifestyle that you have. And, and here, which boy, it really comes to fulfillment when he closes this and he begins to talk to Felix, the, the governor. He's talking to him in, in the end of chapter 24. He's still talking to Felix and they're having this two-year conversation and, and he's calling on him when he's ready and, and he's really dragging his feet. But here, the final message is this. The coming judgment is for all people. The coming judgment is for all people. Felix begins to ask him the question, do you want to be judged here? You want to be judged in Jerusalem? He says, I need to be, I should be judged here. Then he ends up calling to be judged and goes to Rome and the incredible journey that takes him there. And now he's in front of the, the, the leaders and the developers there. We talked about that. What an incredible missionary journey that he is on and the Lord has brought him there. The purposes of the Lord are fulfilled through Paul. And now he is standing in front of the audience of the king. He is of, of the ruler of that area. He's standing, King Agrippa, and, and, and all of a sudden, you're seeing this incredible picture in chapter 25, which I don't have time to read for you today. But all of chapter 25, he begins to walk through the account of what God has done and and begins to steer this conversation. And it culminates in chapter 26. And we see the coming judgment that he proclaims for all people. Paul says, you need to live righteously. Paul says that in this moment, we need to have self-control and we need to understand that there's a coming judgment. Now, these rulers are standing there and they're like, there's nobody who's going to judge me except for Caesar himself. There's no one above me. What are you talking about? And Paul would really answer, but you will be judged one day by the living God. I want you to see the picture here that is taking place. God has led Paul on this journey. He told him that he needed to go to Rome and he was going to go to Rome. Paul could have just went to Rome, but instead he's in prison. Because he's in prison, he meets Felix and he talks with Felix and he begins to share this story with him. Soon he's now sent to Rome and he's not just on the shore and nobody knows there now because of God's divine purpose and plan in his life he is standing before the most powerful rulers of that kingdom and he's sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with them and he's telling them about God and his judgment and how they need listen I have been a minister for many many years and I I would even hate to say the number because it's mind-blowing to me of how long I've been in the ministry, and I want you to know that I've done a lot of funerals. Can I tell you that there is no human being that has ever yet escaped going to their own funeral? You will be, your your 
body, you will be there. It will be in that moment. There are, there is a physical death that comes to us. I think that in the Christian world, many times we've gotten uh, pretty fluffy and happy about how good God is and how great he's been to us. How many of you can say that today? God has been good. We can rejoice in his goodness, but we can't allow ourselves to stop there. Yes, God is good. Yes, he blesses. But he tells these men and women, and he's so clear for you and I today to understand that, that there is good news in the gospel. There is good news in Jesus. But I think sometimes we forget that there's a coming judgment for everyone. You say, well, I don't believe in that. Let me share with you the painful news that what you believe doesn't change our God. What we believe and say, well, I don't know about that. I don't know if I believe that. I want you to know that our belief doesn't change the Almighty's plan and purpose for us to come to know Jesus Christ as, his personal, as our personal Savior. I want to live in such a way that on that judgment day, I pray that you, you as well would say, you know what? Hebrews even tells us about the judgment that's going to come. This is Paul's message. And may we live in such a way that on that day, when that judgment moment happens, that it's going to be a great conversation. It is going to be a powerful moment. I want to live in such a way where, where when on that day when the judge is pleased to judge and say, come on, how many of you can't wait to hear the words? Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Well done. Well done. So I want to encourage you. Don't get discouraged in faithfulness. Don't get discouraged in being faithful. Faithfulness is a, a powerful thing Paul talks about, keeping it simple. He mentions to us in this keeping it simple uh, as he kept his message simple of how we need to have righteousness in Christ. God, help us to be righteous, not by our own acts or what we do, but God, may we be righteous because we have invited you as Lord and Savior of our lives, because we have invited you to lead our lives. God, it's not about what we do, it's about who we are in you, and because of who you are, are in us. We can't wait to tell the world. We can't wait to tell others about you. We can't wait to invite co-workers and friends and family. We just want to be counted faithful. Everybody say faithful. faithful. Come on, look at your neighbor right now and say, be faithful. faithful. Come on, look at him now. Point, I'm going to give you permission. Point a finger at him right now and say, be faithful. Be faithful. Be faithful. Galatians 6 9 tells us, let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not get up, give up. If we do not give up, we will reap a harvest. So let's not be weary in well-doing. Paul is standing in this moment in front of the ruler, the grandson of the man who had a hand in killing his master. That's who Paul is standing in front of, the grandson of the man who had a hand in crucifying Jesus, Paul, is now standing in his presence, sharing the gospel with them. He kept it simple. We see in Acts 26, I'll close with these three verses. So Agrippa said to Paul, you have permission to speak for yourself. King Agrippa now is addressing Paul and says, you know what? You have permission 
to speak for yourself. Then Paul stretched out his hand and made his defense. He said, I consider myself fortunate that it is before you, King Agrippa. I am going to make my defense today against all of the accusations of the Jews, especially because you are familiar with all the customs and controversies of the Jews. Therefore, I beg you to listen to me patiently. I beg you to listen to me patiently. And church, if we could take Paul's words here to King Agrippa, I beg you to listen to me patiently. Could we take that statement? It's like the Lord is speaking to us in our hearts and our lives, and he is calling us to listen to him today. I want you to know that this Bible, the word of God that we entrust our lives to is worth listening to today. The Holy Spirit who is at work and moving in our midst, who speaks to our heart in the still quiet voice, it is worth waiting and listening to today. Don't allow the voices in the world of the world and all the noise of the world to drown out the still small voice in your heart and your life today. Listen, listen, listen. God is speaking to us. He has a clear plan and a direction for you and I to experience this goodness in our lives. And as we understand that and we begin this process of, of, of righteousness, how do we attain that? I don't think that we do on our own. We only do it when we submit our hearts to Jesus Christ and say, God, here I am. I'm listening. How many of you in this room today would desire for the Lord to speak to your life, your circumstance, your mountain, and say, God, here it is. I'm placing it at your feet, and I am asking you, God, I want to hear you. I want to follow you. I want to listen to your voice. Lead me and guide me today. If that's you in this room, all throughout the main floor and balcony, and say, God, I, I am here today, and I need God to speak I need a word from him for my situation, for my heart, my life. If that's you, would you just slip your hand up right where you're at? All across this room, would you just make that in this moment a matter of prayer before God? I want you to know that if you will put yourself in this posture of listening, listen to me. This Paul is telling King Agrippa, listen. And I think that the Holy Spirit, we need to learn in this moment, in this day, God, speak to us. Holy Spirit, lead us and guide us. May we be attentive. God, may we be attuned to your ear. God, may we be fixed on you. May we apply your word in our lives. May it be life to this situation. With every head bowed and every eye closed, you can put your hands down for just a moment. If you're in this room, you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal savior. I want to give you the opportunity in this moment to ask him to be your Lord and savior. If you say, Pastor Kurt, in today I, I just need him to step into my life. I need Jesus to be the Lord and master of my life today. I am so thankful that he's my savior, but today, God, I want to make him the Lord of everything that I am. I want to give him my heart and my life. If that's you, no one looking around, would you just slip your hand up right where you're at? I just want to pray with you. Yes, right over here. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Anyone want to join these five? Hallelujah, Jesus. Anyone else up there? Yep. Yes. Come on, church, can we do something before we pray? Can we just rejoice to heaven today of what God is doing and stirring hearts and lives? Jesus, touch them right now in the name of Jesus. The greatest miracle on the planet is when a heart is transformed and changed and invites Jesus Christ into their life. That is something that we love 
to celebrate. You have made the greatest choice of your life. Those of you who just said, that's me, I want him in my life. I want you to know that celebration was for you because we're celebrating with heaven today that you have made Christ your Lord and Savior. I want you to know that we want to help you. We want to walk with you on this journey of life. We want to help you in your next steps. Before you leave today, would you take one of those cards? Let us know about your decision. Would you make sure to drop that or give it to one of the ushers or come down if you want to talk with one of us? We would love to connect with you today because today is your day of salvation. One more time, church. Let's give the Lord praise today for what he is doing. Let's turn our hearts. Come on, can we all do this now? Can we all turn our hearts toward Jesus? Many of you said, I need him to touch my circumstance, my situation. All across this room, would you stand to your feet? And would you just one more time in with this worship, with our worship team, just declare to the Lord? And would you just lift your hands towards heaven? If you have a need in your life and you need God to move on your circumstance, in your, in your life, in this moment, we're going to sing this song and we're going to invite God to meet us right where we are at. If you would desire, these altars are open. If you desire for someone to pray with you about your situation or your circumstance, I'm going to invite right now those leaders who are in the room. I didn't tell you I was going to do this. I'm probably catching you by surprise, but I would like to invite our, our board, our staff, our pastors, pastors' wives, those of our deacons. Would you right now just move out from where you're at? Would you just make your way to this altar area right now? And I'm going to invite you in this moment to explain, in this moment, to say, God, here I am. I am yours. And if you would desire prayer, that you would come and find one of these and say, would you pray with me right now in Jesus' name all across this room? Come on, let's lift our hands to the King. Father, we glorify you. Father, I pray over these circumstances and situations. God, we in this moment, we declare that you are God. You are the God of our situation. You are the God of our storm. You're the God of our circumstance. Lord, we know that our time is gone, but we take a moment to say, God, here we are. And we ask that you would move mountains in the name of Jesus. Father, we praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Come on, let's sing this together. I trust in